Last week, we took you along for our four-day offshore sail from Ibiza to a little British overseas territory on the very tip of Iberia. Our sailboat Gypsy is anchored on the Spain side of the bay and we'll be walking over to Gibraltar today. It's not every day that you get to walk across a live runway, but that's exactly what you gotta do to head from Spain to Gibraltar. Immediately once you make it across, you know you're in British territory. We just got groceries at one of the larger supermarkets here. And it's odd because we kind of feel like it was more like home. And I kind of think that that's because we spent so much time in Belfast. Yeah, we came to check it out for just the provisioning, if whether we're gonna get some stuff there or over where we're used to. We're gonna get a lot of our frozen stuff for the crossing here, like chicken strips, stuff like that. Stuff like that. Although Gibraltar's area is small, 6.7 kilometers squared, or 2.6 square miles, it's home to 32.6 thousand people and home to the only wild monkeys in all of Europe. We've had a couple of strong blows come our way through the bay and we've been re-anchoring in different spots to seek more protection. Take note of where this navy blue sailboat is anchored. In the height of the blow this evening, this sailboat was coming into anchor and we see him drop the hook way too close to the rocks. And once he realized the same, he tried to pick up anchor only to have issues with bringing it back up. Oh my God. Where are they going? Their anchor's down and they're just motoring. Oh my god. Our concern here was that as he passed right in front of Gypsy with his anchor and chain down, he could potentially lift our chain, which could be horrific. Get vendors! Grab your f***ing curling line and pull it off. We watched as he was finally able to lift his anchor past his hull and visually see that we were not attached to it. I got you. We learned afterwards that the captain had called for a pan-pan on the radio, advising of motor, anchor, and sail issues. As they made their way closer to the back of the bay, a boat heard his pan-pan call and came to assist. We watched as they were towed safely into the marina. While all this is happening, the navy blue sailboat ended up dragging pretty far back into the bay. We didn't see anybody above and thought maybe no one was on board. Judging by the motion of their boat, it must have gotten the attention of all four people on board because they popped their heads out and realized that they needed to re-anchor. Hey, you guys would be a little bit more comfortable over there. Oh, he's falling. That's right where I thought they would anchor. Yeah, he's... Oh, no. Then, this guy who's been up top on his boat watching caught his anchor pop off and right away he quickly turned his engine on. Holy f That guy's so low. We witnessed the challenge in being solo on such a large boat, having to be at the helm in these conditions while attempting to also run up to the bow to deal with the anchor and the chain. Crew on the catamaran next to us got in their dinghy to offer him assistance. 
We realized he may have completely lost his anchor and ended up heading into the marina as well. Thank goodness a marina was just next door. Oh. All right, guys. Weather's getting colder here in, uh, in Gibraltar. As you can tell, I now have a sore throat. So it's time to head south. We're just waiting on a couple things. But a couple things I've read and heard from other experiences of cruisers heading from Europe to the Caribbean is because you're in December, the sun isn't as high in the sky as in the summer. And since you're heading east to west, you only really get 50% of your solar because sails are gonna block half that light throughout the day. And plus the sun isn't as high in the sky. You don't get as much efficiency. So if you remember back in the Caribbean, we had a couple of 100 watt flexible solar panels that I mounted on our sunshade on the back of the boat because it caught the evening light. The back of the boat's always facing west, so you get that west sunset light. I haven't been able to really mount them anywhere because they don't fit anywhere, but I realized we're going to be heading east to west. The sun will always be on our port side, and that's where our paddleboard is. So I'm actually going to mount these 100 watt panels to the bottom of our paddleboard because our paddleboard sits on the port side of the boat. I already have the charge controller and the cable set up so I just really got to tie them to the paddleboard and then I think I just have to do an extension cable to get the cables connected to the, the other set of cables I have. And I think that'll work. If I can get any extra power that'll, uh, that'll really help because we're definitely struggling for power right now. Well, we did realize one of our solar panels, our main one, was fried. We replaced the panel because we found a really good deal on panels over here. So anyways, I replaced one of the panels, so it should be better that way. But this is just going to give us that extra little bit. That's the plan anyways. So yeah, I'm just going to get these tied on and we'll see how they work. Extra 200 watts right there. We are finally walking up the rock. You can take a tour with the bus and a cable car and all that, but we're gonna keep on trekking. We've already gained some elevation here, as you can see from the backdrop. It's getting a little hot, so Travis has got to shed some layers here. Each wristband was 18 quid or sterling pounds, and it gets us access to all the sites up there. It's supposed to be well worth it, so we're excited. I heard there were macaws in the rock, but didn't realize how many there are. A little startling at first when crossing their path. Apparently you gotta hold on to your sunnies and all the things, cause they're the ones that like to snatch from you. Makes me a little nervous. I was holding an apple earlier, so I chopped it. <laughs> uh, monkeys like give you this blank stare. A sign that said if the monkeys are confined to these steps, they could react aggressively. Are there babies? <gasps> There's babies! It's really nice that we chose a clear day to do this because you can see right over the Gibraltar Strait to Africa. And that's where we're heading and beyond. The Strait to the Canaries. And once you get up this high, of course there are going to be gorgeous views from up above. This is the coolest cave I've ever been in. Through the music or whatever, like the ambiance it's, is very yeah. spooky. St. Michael's Cave was long believed to be bottomless. 
and there's a story that the Rock of Gibraltar was linked to Africa by a subterranean passage under the Strait of Gibraltar, and that the macaws came in through this way as well. Pretty epic, eh? With that face, it's a yes. Hey, yeah, it's really cool. a little bit more but you can spend days in here. It's fun. Now time to walk all the way over there. There's Gypsy right over there. Can you make it? I think I can. All right maybe a pizza on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. We're very excited this morning as we move Gypsy over to Gibraltar. Good job. We got up bright and early, made our way into the Gibraltar side over at the refueling station because we know that it's a lot cheaper here than on the Spain side for fuel. And then we're going to be heading into the marina, which is just behind the camera. And I think that's going to be our slip behind that big sailboat there. So the reason why we're grabbing a slip is because we are going to be picking up something very exciting today. Okay, we're all fueled up. It's time to pay. We're so excited to be heading back to the Caribbean where we hardly ever needed to fill up. We're filling up so often here and it's really expensive. Rain showers, that's how you know we're in the British territory. It's pretty though in the morning. Look at that, the rock behind. Travis is just switching over our fenders right now because they told us that if we're gonna be bowing into our slip, then we're gonna have to put all the fenders on the starboard side, that's where the finger is which is nice that there's a finger because we're not med mooring at this marina, so that is a plus. Okay, so this is why we had to grab a slip at the marina. We had this big special package arrive that's gonna make our downwind sailing so much more comfortable, hopefully. And it's kind of like Christmas because we know what's in here, but we don't know the color. Yeah, definitely. So. We look at the same time. <gasps> Wait. Good yeah, color. Oh. We want to give a big thanks to Precision Sales again for hooking us up with these amazing sales. You guys know that when we were back in Belfast, we got our head sail and our main sail by Which Precision. We love them. Yeah. So this is kind of just what we need to complete our set. We can't sail very well in under 11 knots of wind. Anything under 11 knots, our sails are too thick and they just don't hold shape. And then we get the sails flapping around and especially in any sort of wind or waves. That's what happens. So that's why a really nice, very lightweight uh, spinnaker will hold open in lighter winds. So we're really excited that we can now sail in lighter winds because, yeah, we always have to go out in really heavy conditions. This is an asymmetrical spinnaker. I don't know if we're going to open it up now because we don't have... A... Are we going to open this up? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only, yeah, the only thing is we don't have a sock for it. We've never flown an asymmetrical spinnaker. We've flown a drifter before once in like three knots of wind and it had a sock and it was fairly easy to deal with. But now we, that's our thing. We'll have to get a sock at some point, but. Uh, I don't think we're going to get one before we cross though with the timing and availability. I don't know. I mean, yeah. we hope we do, but if not, we've been kind of just Googling different ways to figure out how to best deploy it and, you know, bring it down when it needs to come down without it going all into over. the water. Yeah, or, <laughs> all yeah, over. All over or into the water. Yeah. It just makes it a little less fun. Um, like I, I don't think we'll run it overnight just because if there's any gusts or squalls and we'll have to emergency douse it, it'd be we'll, a bit scary. We'll figure but, it out, but yeah. we're just happy to have our hands on it. Oh my God, so happy. The reason why we got a slip to pick up this package is because it was just so much easier. So we had heard to have things shipped into Gibraltar versus 
Spain where we were anchored. Well, number one, because when we're anchored in Spain, we obviously don't have an address, but um, I'm sure we could have gotten it shipped to like a courier depot or something like that, but then we would have to pay VAT, which is value added tax on the sale, which obviously we're not trying to do that if you know, we can just hop right over. So we figured paying for a marina slip would be far cheaper than the VAT would be. Plus there is a grocery store that we want to do some provisioning to get a lot of frozen food. Anyways, super happy. Thanks again, Precision Sales. Can't wait to use it. Can we see what it looks like? I know. You'll have to stay tuned. Yeah. Now that we've got our spinnaker, we're doing one last grocery run before taking the next weather window out of Gibraltar to sail to the Canary Islands. It's about a 580 nautical mile sail, which will take us about four to five days. I found these and I was super excited. We went to one Asian store in Gibraltar and one pack of these were $5.99, like quid, which equated to $10 or just over $10 Canadian. For the Spain side, found another store and they were €2.60, which was like three seventy nine dollars Canadian. So we've got a couple of these. Just prepping at least three or four dinners for us just in case it's uncomfortable we're tired or you know we just want to be able to pull something out quick to eat we're just gonna have mashed potatoes meat and gravy like our shepherd's pie sort of deal that we did for the bay of biscay we also did for our transatlantic last year made some gyoza mix because i was using the same ingredients anyway so i just pre-made that and if it's surprisingly calm enough that we need something to do i don't know maybe we can make fresh gyozas it tastes better fresh, and at least I've already done the mix. If you recall, our way into the med, we were on high alert with these orcas that have been bumping rudders off of sailboats, and it's that same song and dance again. This is the Strait of Gibraltar, which we'll have to go through to leave, and this is the hot spot. Orca interactions have been reported daily, it seems, right in this area as boats are leaving. One sailboat even sank while it was being rescued and towed into Morocco. There's a strong current that comes into the strait, which we'll be fighting on our way out. So with these orcas in the area, we're not gonna lie, we're pretty nervous to head out. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel because we'll be making our way out of this tricky area next episode. Thanks for watching.